congratulations on being the co-founder of BNDB Agency and so many of like things in the past. I'm so excited to kind of just dig into that. So first, right. yeah. So before I even jump into everything, like I just have to know how did everything start? Like, can you walk me through a little bit about just your journey and have you always, you know, wanted to be in entertainment? Yeah. So ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to do music. Mm -hmm. And when I got into college, that's when I started networking, building relationships. And I actually started an entertainment PR firm at 19 in college. And then I was representing a lot of people, met a lot of people. And I was handpicked and hired by LA Reed to work on his team at Island Def Jam. I was there for six years in the A&R department. And I worked with the late, great Shakir Stewart. And we worked on albums like Nas, LL Cool J, Janet Jackson, Young Jeezy, Rick Ross, and the list goes on. And it was an amazing time when Jay-Z was president. And um, then I left and started my own um, production company and built a recording studio in Midtown Atlanta called 12 Music and Studios. I owned and operated that for seven years. I did uh, talent management, artist development, and um, just created an amazing creative hub and staple in Atlanta. And then I have been working on TI's management team for the last five years. I sold the studio in 2019. And in 2020, when the pandemic hit, that's when we actually launched CND the agency, which is an all women led agency where we do marketing, branding, project management, some PR support for different clients and businesses and entertainment. Um, so that is like my 20 year journey in a nutshell, but yes, that is how I got started. Yeah. You, you've been busy. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. It's been a little busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's start from the beginning. Like with the PR firm, I can remember, you know, being in college, I think it was like scandal and it came out and everybody was like, this is interesting. Like, what did she do? You know what I mean? Is this, is this a journey to the Olivia Pope? That's what I kind of started hearing people talk about PR, but obviously you were very tapped in like from the beginning. So tell me where that like interest came from. Was it just like, did, did, did someone you know work in PR? Did you just kind of always know, like, I know I'm being entertained, but I feel like PR is something that you kind of have to get exposed to. to, to <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Very great. A good question. So I grew up in Atlanta and I went to Oglethorpe University and I was a communications major. And one of my classes was a public relations class. And I was sitting in class one day and the teacher was talking about all the different things that a publicist does. And it was actually things that I was doing, just okay. trying to get into the business right. um, for free. It was stuff that I didn't even know you could get paid to do. Right. Writing bios, helping book people on, you know, uh, media outlets, helping with um, branding and stuff for clients. And I didn't know even like booking shows. I had no idea that these were things I just wanted to be in the music business so badly that I was willing to just do whatever it could take to get me there. And yeah. then I realized, oh, wow, I could actually do this and make money at the same time. And so that's when I didn't know what I was doing, but I decided to take a, just a risk yeah. and open a PR firm and it worked out. That is so amazing. That is so amazing. And moving to like, you know, when you started working with LA Reed, was it, do you think there was a certain, like, was it a certain deal or something, a brand collaboration that you did? Was there something particular that you feel like you did to really that attracted him? Like say, Hey, I need to work with her. Or do you think it was just your work ethic? Like, can, can you point back to that moment? Yeah, it was definitely my work ethic. I think he saw who I was working with and what I was doing. And it was all the same people that he knew, people yeah. that he'd worked with in his career. And so he probably was like, who is this young girl that's making these moves, these power moves in Atlanta? And that's when he decided I need her on my team. And that's when he offered me a job. That is so amazing. Oh my gosh. And what was that experience like? I feel like that's the time like everybody talks about, like, oh my gosh, Island Def Jam when Yeah, it was there. Yeah. It was an amazing time to be at Def Jam. I mean, Rihanna, Kanye West, Jay-Z, Neo, uh, so many things, The Killers, Fall Out Boy. I mean, we had an amazing roster at that time. So it was what Mariah Carey, I mean, it, so many things. And it was just an incredible time to be there. And I got to learn from the best of the best in the business, the cream of the crop, and really realize how albums are made, how hits are picked, 
how artists are signed, how things need to get done to function in a major machine like that. And that's what was, that was the experience and the knowledge that I was able to gain to know then how to break out on my own and go back to being my, an entrepreneur again and building my own business. Wow. Well, and what was, you know, it's, I feel like a lot of times we hear people saying, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur, but th there's not a lot of talk about that process of what it takes to like really learn those skills. So let me ask you, how hard was it to stay focused? I feel like some people would have been like, wow, this is cool. Like <laughs> just being, just being transparent, but you obviously, you know, stayed focused. So tell me about that process and how, how was that? Was it ever challenging? Yeah. So when I decided to leave, I had to literally give up yeah. 401k, a bi-weekly direct deposit in my bank account from Universal Music Group, things that really are secure. Mm -hmm. And I had to decide that I had to go out here and eat what I kill. So yeah. being an entrepreneur is not as glamorous as everybody makes it out to be. What I like to tell people is it's not for everybody. You have to really be a self-starter. And the other thing about it is I think people just kind of jump into it and don't realize what it takes, but you really need to have those relationships, that experience experience ahead of time where you're working for somebody else and you kind of you get to learn on their dime and understand things those built up relationships and really having a true plan a business plan because things are going to shift and change and the other thing that people always like to leave out you have to have some money to start a business that's a good point <laughs> okay yes yeah. yeah. to really start a business i mean they say that you're supposed to have one year worth of expenses and salary and everything ready to go because yeah. it takes a while to make money when you're first starting out as a new business right and you know i'm happy you said that because especially like the way we like we're all on instagram and tiktok you see all of these like wow like the social media life is so glamorous but it's like yeah. there is another side to that so that was another question i wanted to ask you too like what is so I, and i mean of course i'll dig into that a little bit too but just like What's been the difference, the way social media has affected like what you do and even like how you work with, you know, your clients and different things like that? Yeah, what's so crazy is when I was at Def Jam at that time, we didn't have social media. Actually, MySpace was just getting started. So it's like way back then. Yeah. And um, I didn't I didn't have any of the stuff that I have now. But now with social media, it's so easy to brand yourself. It's so easy to show people what you do, how you do. And it's just like another resume or face card right, for right. people. So I really have enjoyed um, mm -hmm. building my social media and building my following and people that really like to interact with me and see what I have going on. And I like to show the behind the scenes of what it takes for this talent that a lot of people, they just see them on TV or they see them at a show and they don't realize all the stuff that it takes behind the scenes to actually get that artist to be who they are. Right, right. And that's, you know, that's so important. I hear so many people talking about like the, what, how people got to where they are, the behind the scenes, the stuff we don't know. So, you know, I've heard a lot of talk about like artist development, like, you, you know, you see comments on, like on YouTube and stuff, you can tell they had artist development, you can tell they can. It's like, how do we really know? You know we're all, we're all putting our input in, but how important yeah. do you think it is, especially as a manager? So important. Yeah. I think that every artist, no matter what level they're on needs development yeah. or needs practice okay. even um even singers yeah. on stage they need to be with a vocal coach a choreographer this is all just practice and development to be a better artist all the time so even rappers they don't think that they need to like choreography doesn't mean you're breaking out into dance moves it means owning the stage knowing how to move knowing how to interact with your audience when you're on it, when you're at a show, when you're on a stage, when you're on a platform. And so all of this stuff is really important. I think the ones that really want to be great and really want to be true superstars understand and do artist development. So cool. That's right. That makes, that makes so much sense. That makes so much sense. Now tell me about, oh my gosh, with 12 music videos, when you, I want to know like how that started, how do we go from the PR firm to something? I know you've been recognized by the city, which is so amazing. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so tell me, like, how did that, how did, I know we're going, I'm going all over the place, like I said, I'm so okay. much, I had to use the time, but um, when you going from, like, the PR firm and then saying, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to create the studio as well, how did we get there? Yeah, so after I left Def Jam, I had a great opportunity to, I found a warehouse and we built out, I had a business partner at the time, we built out the studio mm -hmm. and then started to develop talent. That was the whole point because when we built the studio, we didn't want to do it to just 
book studio time. That's not a really profitable business. Okay. What we wanted to do was assign talent, get the major record deals, publishing deals, develop them and make money on those hit records. So um, I really had no idea what I was doing, to be honest with you. Another, like had no idea how to build a studio, had no idea how to oversee this construction to even operate it, but I figured it out and we yeah. did receive, we were the first studio in Atlanta to receive a proclamation from the city of Atlanta. And that was a very great moment. Yes, that's oh, that's so amazing. I feel like it's a process to even get the city to recognize it, something like that for, yeah. for hip hop. That's just amazing. So, Thank and you. so many like, you know, stars have been there. So many like hits have been made from that studio. So when I was, when I was reading, just kind of doing my research and I, when did you decide to sell it? What was that process like? Was it the entrepreneurial decision? Was it a creative decision? Like, tell me a little bit about that. It was just a timing decision. Like I had been doing it for so long. I think people don't realize that a studio is a 24 hour business. There's no off. It's yeah. seven days a week, every single hour of the day, even holidays. I had people in the studio on Christmas, yes. New Year's, you know, Thanksgiving. They didn't care. Their creatives like to create when they want to. And oftentimes it's very late at night as well. So I was, I was constantly having to manage this space, even though I had staff and everything. It's just it's a, it's a, it's very tiring. You know, it, it gets to be, um, a lot of work. And so I decided that it was time for me to shift into something else. And also I was doing a lot more traveling at the time, working on TI's team and getting more engaged with what he was doing. So it was just the right timing to do it. I think that as a business owner and as an entrepreneur, you have to know when to keep things and you have to know when to sell them. Yeah. Oh, good piece of advice. Okay. And um, did, let me ask you, when you were going through this whole process and everything like that, I feel like it's very important to make sure you have like the right people around you. So you mentioned, like, I just hear you say that it's 24 seven. I'm like, obviously you have to get those staff people you yeah. trust. So how did you go about building your team and how important is that to you? Building a team is so key. It's one of the most important things. You cannot do it all by yourself. Okay. And I had to really do it by trial and error finding the right people, finding loyal people and keeping them. I had over 10 people on staff and then over 30 interns at one time because they help with the structure of the studio and keeping the studio functioning. So it was a big, um, it was a big business of managing people yeah. and a team and, you know, making sure that the culture and the climate and everybody was there and happy and wanting to be there. Right, right. And I got to mention the word of 2022, balance. So how, how do you balance? I just feel like you're juggling multiple things. So how, how do you balance like, you know, maybe time with friends and family or, you know, personal time or how do you make time for those things? You really have to make a conscious effort to balance your personal and work life. And especially as an entrepreneur, that's what people don't know. It's like, if something doesn't get done, it's on your shoulder. So if you have to deliver for a client and somebody on your team doesn't meet that deadline, you have to pick up that slack. So the, we're in a lifestyle business. It's not a nine to five. So what you have to do is really make a conscious effort to schedule out time like you would anything else, like okay. you would to go eat, get your nails done, go, okay. go um, and travel, do anything you have to schedule out. So for me, it's very important that I work out every day or at least try to. It's very important that I have a time in my days to just have mental breaks, right. um, spend time with my family on certain days of the week and just really incorporate that because the thing about it is your to-do list is always going to be long. Yes. You're never not going to have a to-do list. So right. you have to prioritize your health and your right. mental health is part of your overall health. And it's so important to prioritize that. So true. So true. So true. And that is a really good advice because I've got really good advice because I feel like that's kind of, I know personally, that's what I stick to my to-do list. Like, okay, I just got to make sure I write it down because if it's not written down, it's not going to get done. But sometimes it never, I feel like it does not end. So it's important to make sure you put those moments in as yeah. well. Yeah. So um, we know that, you know, you also obviously were managing expeditiously in TI's podcast. So how did that relationship happen? And what's it like, you know, being on the management team? Yeah, so Tip is always a lot of fun and he's always got something going on. So he keeps us on our toes. I actually met him when I was in college. I booked him for a show and I started working with Grand Hustle 
back when I was like kind of interning for them. Um, I was Jason Jeter's assistant back before I actually, it was right before I started the PR firm. So we've been knowing each other for over 15 years. I mean, for like 17, 18 years now, yeah. right before we dropped Trap Music. So then we reconnected, you, like I said, about five or six years ago and um, decided to work together again. And so that's how the relationship actually started. We've been knowing each other for a while, but then we reconnected. And then he had this great opportunity to start a podcast. And I was one of the producers of the podcast and helped him launch it. And it was a number one podcast and is a really expeditious, expeditiously is one of my favorite things that we've done together. Amazing. I mean, yes, I like it too. Pod podcasts are like, I, especially now in this remote time, I feel like it just gets us all through. Like, you know, you listen <laughs> to the background before you know you're listening every week. So exactly. Very, very cool. So of course, now I just want to know a little bit about any advice um, with everything that you've done. And I know it encompasses so many different things. I meet so many women who want to be in media, whether it's in front of the camera or behind the scenes. And, you know, it's how do I stand out? How do I, whether it's like you mentioned, like it's an artist, how can I get my content to be seen? For people who are want to be more in the PR space, it's always a matter of how do I, how can I stand out? And you've obviously been able to do that. So if you can give a piece of advice to maybe, you know, that intern or, you know, there shouldn't have to be an intern, anyone grow that woman yeah. who is trying to, to pursue, what would you say? Um, great question. So two things, yeah. you want to build relationships, PR, media, everything in that whole arena is about your relationships. You have to have strong relationships with talent and yeah. strong relationships with the media outlet. So building that being networking, making sure you're going to the right events. But I would also suggest getting a mentor, a mentor in the space that you want to be in. So another publicist or anybody that is, if you want to be a talent manager, a manager, you want to get a, a mentor that helps guide you throughout your career. It's somebody that's done it before, somebody that can give you some real true hands-on guidance. And don't be afraid to intern. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty, get in there, just get the experiences that you need because the quicker you figure out what you want to do or what you like to do and what you don't like to do, the faster you can get to your real goals. Yes. Yes. I wish, that's a good piece. I wish I would have learned that. That's so true. You got to get in, figure out what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Fail fast and forward, you know, especially when you're younger, right? Getting out of college or while you're in college, like those, the, your twenties, yeah. get in there and really get a mentor and like really intern places and get, you know, just learn. Right. Right. Are there any like people or experiences you say can really, you feel like it really helps cultivate your career? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's so many along the way. Yeah. I would just say that, um, obviously LA Reed gave me such a great big opportunity yeah. and him and Shakira's mentorship. Um, and I have a great, like great accountability partners and friendships just people that are not even in the business that keep me s sane and stable yes. and accountable for who I am as a person and my character and integrity and everything that I do and just staying fast to my goals. I have a business manager, Keon, mm -hmm. who's also on the CND, the agency team, and she helps me really figure out how to get to my goals all the way around, life and work goals. Love that, love that. <laughs> Yes. Now, what made you start CND, the agency, and why was it important to you to make the focus moment? Yes. Yeah, so Courtney and I had been friends for a long time. We did business together, but we, we've always talked about doing something. And when the pandemic hit, we yeah. finally had an opportunity to focus in and really think about what's important to us. And we both came from these male dominated industries where we never had women mentors. We always had men mentors. And so we wanted to make that difference for the next generation of women leaders. So we created CND, the agency to, to merge our services together to represent clients and service them, but to also at the same time, create this positive environment and opportunity for minority women to work together and to learn from each other and to be mentors to them. Yes, that's so, that's so needed. That's so needed because you said, yeah, so many women who are saying, you know, who want to be in the field, but are saying, you know, they're uncomfortable for multiple reasons or it's hard to get ahead. And I'm sure, I, you know, you don't, many of the things that I'm talking yeah. about. So 
that's just such an amazing thing to be able to be there and really have people who have made it, but also be able to get that experience firsthand. So yep. definitely, definitely. And what personally, what is next for you? What's one of the goals that you're still continuing to, to press on for? Building up CND, the agency, making it one of the go-to agencies in the nation, really really just making that work. We're almost two years in, so just building that up. And then personally, just getting married, having children. I mean, that's that's the next step. <laughs> you know what, I'll ask a little girl talk question. How is that being around like such high profile people and stuff, I would imagine dating could be hard. Is that- It's difficult? very hard. <laughs> it's yeah. extremely hard because I think a lot of times people are intimidated by what you do right. um, and who you're around and, so it's, you know, it's a catch 22, honestly. Got it, got it. Okay, okay. Well, I, you balance. So, you know, <laughs> send it positive energy. Well, thank you. Yes, yes. Well, thank you for everything. I feel like this is like, like I said, I've followed you for a while. I've seen your work and I've always been like, I have to find a way to connect with her. So I definitely wanted the chance to interview you and I'm excited to share it with our readers and, you know, have them tap in on the Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yes, good, good. I appreciate your time. And again, I'm Kirby. I was like, I'm going to try to start recording quick, but I wanted to make sure I still introduce myself and say of thank course. you. And you know, I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Kirby. <laughs> have a good rest of the day. You too.